host Jeremy from OpticHouse.com. So this video should be called Jeremy Punks Out because basically that's exactly what I did. Uh, the previous drawing videos I had posted were showing the process of me flatting and starting to color a piece that I ended up calling Rapture Rumble. It's an angel and devil, you know, wrestling in you know in a background of clouds, which you'll see eventually, you know, the finished piece. But the whole point of me doing these drawing videos and blogging about my creative process is not a how-to. It's just sort of the, the, it's actually the weird creative mess that someone makes as they're figuring things out. Because I don't necessarily feel that there's a lot of things that I would want to give a tutorial on. I don't feel like I'm a master at my craft. I feel like I'm someone who's practicing, who makes decent, competent art that's interesting, but I certainly don't feel like I'm a, a master draftsman, a master painter, a master digital artist, any of those things. I'm a journeyman, just like many of the other creative people I know and encounter, you know, amongst online, in the world, at comic conventions. So what went wrong is that I got lost in the wilderness. I was working on working on Rapture Rumble. And I thought I knew what I wanted with my background. I painted one version of it, and it didn't look good. I painted another version, and it didn't look good. And so I said, well, let me fall back and just do the image in black and white and work out the details. And when I started going into an exploration of, of what I wanted, I really realized I wanted dark storm clouds as my background for the image. So I went online and, and found some reference, and I'll include the, the reference photos and links to the websites where I found them, because one of them is a photo of, from a photographer on DeviantArt. The other one, I can't remember exactly what the website was, but I want to at least provide links that you can... I think that when you use particular artist's work for reference, you should always give credit where credit's due, and you should always reference, not copy. There's a difference. Um, but, you know, I definitely think using photography for reference particularly when you're doing fantasy pieces, are, is important because when you bring a certain sense of realism, and I am not a realist, photorealistic or realistic artist at all, but when you're drawing things that are very fantastical or amazing, adding little touches that have a realistic feel to them make that fantasy that much more convincing. But I started going down a, a long path where I was no longer d doing my creative process, working things out. I was just exploring foundering, painting out backgrounds, trying it again, not liking that one, saving pieces, adding other things. And I should have been documenting that whole process. What stopped me from doing it was that I didn't know how long this exploration was going to go on. I didn't know whether it was just going to be like an hour or two of dicking around and, you know, testing out a few different brushes or whether it was going to be something where I was going to end up repainting this thing three times, five times. And I didn't know how interesting it would be for me to have just a massive, you know, five-part video series on me coloring this one piece. So I, I stopped doing that and just sat down and dug into the, the process that I needed to work. And in, in the end, it only took me like a weekend to, to sort the piece out. But it was not what I felt a lot of professional artists would show of their work. They, you know, people like to show the beautiful polished process and this is for me from start this is me to finish and that is a denial of the entire purpose of me having my website and my blog this purpose is showing the weird messy underbelly showing having no idea what the hell you're doing and having to figure it out that's kind of what I want to explore and what I want to share I don't want to share perfection I want to share the imperfection of my process trying to find my way towards I guess the creative truth of a particular piece, because I don't think anything that I create is perfect, but what I try to do is create something that's true. You know, even if it's not my personal truth, it may not be, you know, characters that have gone through what I've gone through, whether it's a comic book or a single piece, but it's something that speaks to a, an emotion or, a, you know, a feeling and a sensation that feels honest and compelling and comes from an earnest place. That's what I'm trying to create. And by not documenting what it's like to be lost in the woods, I feel like I betrayed that ideal. So now I'm going to go through slides and try and show you and recreate part of that messy process that I went in. Because if I can't be 
honest in the moment, at least I can come back to it and say, this is where I was. This is what happened. These are the things I, I messed around with and where I fumbled and, and wandered and stumbled. So one of the things I started was after getting the, the reference, the photo reference that I wanted for the background, I started looking at uh, the brushes. And for the most part, I tend to use basic brushes in Photoshop. But I will use the setting where it just has all of the round brushes. So it just has all the round airbrush brushes and all the round hard brushes. Um, I will just use that setting and anything that I need to get an interesting texture to, I will either Photoshop the textures in or I will just paint the basic part of what I need. So I try to rely more on traditional painting techniques than relying on cool brushes. But the cloud look that I wanted, I just didn't see an easy way to get the look that I wanted. This is one of those cases where traditional media trumps digital media because, you know, with a dry brush, I would say I could easily get that look. I mean, I don't know if I could get that look in pen and ink, but you give me some acrylics, I can, can make clouds that look like the clouds I ended up using in the, the final piece. There's a little dry brush, and a nice flat bristle um, brush, and some, you know, a little bit of dark, some light, some gray, and some medium, just kind of like, I can, I can make it happen, you know. Well, who knows? Maybe I can't anymore because it's been a few years since I've done any traditional painting. So maybe I should jump back in that pool just, you know, to make sure I haven't lost those chops. That's a discussion for another video. What I decided to do was I went back to the very basic, not even the basic. There's a set in, in Photoshop, I think that's basic brushes, but they aren't the same as the default brushes. So what I did was I went back and I changed my brush palette to the default brushes and then I did something that I have never done before and it stunned me when I realized I had never done it before. While I've looked at the little pictures of the brushes, I can see what each brush in theory should do. But I've never actually sat there and tested every single brush in the default Photoshop brush settings. And I thought, as opposed to sitting and going through all of the menus, and trying to find a brush that will give me the cloud look that I feel, I should have a good understanding of what's in the basic toolbox. Like just as a practitioner of digital artwork who works with Photoshop regularly in combination with traditional artwork, scanning in drawings and pen and ink and, and coloring over it, I should have an understanding of what each basic Photoshop brush does, the default brushes. So I made a little, um, a little chart and I just have the name of each brush that comes in the default settings. Um, the brushes where it's the same brush but at different sizes, I skipped over some of them. So I didn't do every single one. I just you know, had the ones where each brush is different. And then I went in and I made a few different uh, brush strokes over each one. You know, Just make a little smear in a corner. And I kind of intentionally made it look like a little bit of clouds or like a landscape, like a little side hillside or like clouds coming over the horizon. Intentionally, something that was in the, the vein of what I was going to do, just so I could gauge which one would give me the closest look of what I wanted, but also by doing the similar strokes for all of them, I could say, all right, this is what happens when I use this brush at like 20% opacity and make a few different strokes over it so I can see how they layer and, and blend with each other. And I made this chart and I was thinking to myself, why have I never done this before? Years ago, I should have done this just so that way, anytime I'm working on a piece, sometimes it would actually behoove me to just go and pick the right brush and paint the background I want as opposed to photoshopping textures in. So I may go in and paint more textures as opposed to uh, photoshopping textures in. And speaking of photoshopping, the thing that was also important for me was that I didn't just go online, find the photos of clouds, and then just drop those clouds into the background. There are some images, like if I can find some stock photography that's free, I will use them. But it's a little too easy sometimes when I'm looking for reference online to just take a background, take someone else's photo and drop it in. I am, don't think there's anything wrong with using photos as backgrounds in digital artwork, but when I do it, I prefer it to be a photo that I have taken myself. That just feels ethically correct as opposed to working off of someone else's intellectual property. And when I say working off of, I mean blatantly using someone else's intellectual property as opposed to using it for reference while creating something new that is my own. Um, and one of the things that you can see is that I took one of the photos that I found off of DeviantArt and I put 
a, a blank canvas next to it and painted a bunch of clouds into the blank area next to it just to see if it would look like what I want. And that little painting, the test painting I did, is not a recreation and a duplication of the photo that I referenced, but it captures the same tone. It has the, it was going for a certain look and style, and my test proved that I can get the look that I want. Once I had that, and I had brushes that I knew I wanted, I went back, started from scratch with the background, and to be honest, other than the fact that I had done the flats, it really was like starting from scratch for the third or fourth time on this piece. And then from there, it was paint the background, get the, uh, the lighting in the background correct. I want to have like a little light golden glow behind the figures. Once I started doing that, I then went back into the characters and honestly, I probably should have waited to do their skin tones to the very last because the, the bright blue and red I, I was using was so loud that it was fighting with everything. And I knew I wanted it to be that bright, but I wanted to build up to that level of saturation as opposed to starting at that level of saturation and then finding a way to harmonize it. So it was a lot of like starting with everything and like turned up to 11 and tamping things down and, you know, I eventually added a, a, de a saturation layer, but it was really a desaturation layer where I muted and darkened everything around just the, the main part of the characters. And then, you know, tried to light them so that they had both the lighting from the angel's halo working in concert with the environmental lighting, which was kind of shining down on them like a spotlight, lighting the, the figures and the background around them adding reflective lighting. And these are all things that, you know, I've learned about in figure drawing classes, but I never had the wherewithal to, to apply to my finished pieces. Um, understanding how well lighting can be used to, to describe vol volume and shape. And now that I've, I've gotten a better understanding of those things, I can apply them and you know, I won't say that it's photorealistic, but it's just taking that knowledge and uh, and using it to to step my artwork the level of detail. And it's not detail for detail's sake, just adding textures and rendered lines, but it's just the adding of like an extra light underneath the uh, the torso of the devil, where it's the light of the angel skin being reflected on her, or having you know the uh, the red of the devil her skin being picked up by the angel's blue skin, you know, having the thing where both of their skins are interacting with each other, but walking that fine balance where they don't just turn to like a, like they both don't just look purple. Having both of them just catching a little bit of that cast, um, going in and trying to paint hair better. And that's something I really want to work towards in the future. I don't think I paint hair particularly well. And what I do is when I discover that when I realize that there's something I'm doing poorly, I try to throw myself into it. So hopefully over the next year, I will be doing more and more pieces, not with intricate hair. It's not about detail. It's about convincing hair, hair that feels like hair, that looks like hair, something that looks you can reach out and touch and it. it's going to be soft or curly or, you know, like almost you can smell the fragrance of the shampoo of the, the character. And, and, you know, it's not necessarily female characters. It could be, a, I could draw some guys with some nice hair, even though I shave my head. You know, not above that. Um, and eventually, but back to the piece, eventually I, I pulled it together, got the lighting working in concert, um, darkened and muted some of the, the parts of the limbs that were away from the, the, the center of attention, you know, their heads around their, their upper torsos, you know, their muscles straining and pulling against each other, the lighting of the halo reflecting, not reflecting, but illuminating the wings, at least the parts that are within the spotlight area, you know. Overall, I am pretty happy with the way this piece came out. It gave me a lot, it challenged me, which I think a good piece should do, is to get you to grow and, and try new things, to struggle a little bit. I learned things from it. And I still feel like I have a lot to learn and a lot to grow and things to try in future pieces. Because as opposed to just trying to redo the same piece over and over again, trying to get to some fictional level of perfection, I realized that I did what I thought was the best I could do with this piece. I've taken, now my job is to take what I've learned from it and the challenges from it and say, all right, how can I make the next piece even better? So that's it for now. Check out my website, OpticHouse.com. Sign up for my mailing list. Leave questions in the comments section. 
Go be creative.